Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to my video series entitled One God, Understanding the Singularity of God in Light of the Distinctions Between Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is video number four in this series, so if you're just tuning in for the first time, I encourage you to go back to the very first video and watch this series in order because in those first few videos, I establish foundational truths um, regarding who God is so that we can understand who Jesus is. And so in this video, I'm dealing with a common objection to the understanding from Scripture that there's only one God, one Elohim, and his name is Yahweh. And the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 uh, tells us that the only Elohim that exists is the Father. And so when we read about God, our understanding is that it's referring to um, the Father, and his name is Yahweh. And so in this video, I want to deal with the objection that some people have, that, that they come to the Old Testament and they read uh, that there, there's one single God, but they turn to the Hebrew and they look at the word in Hebrew and it's a plural word, a plural noun, Elohim. And because this is a plural word, they come to the conclusion that there's a mystery in God and that that mystery is the Trinity. Be, that God is made up of three persons that are somehow one God in purpose and essence. But in this video, I want to show you that there's no mystery in this plural noun, Elohim, uh, translated here as God in uh, the Old Testament. When it's referring to the one true God, there's no mystery in that word Elohim. That word Elohim, it's a title. And though it is a plural noun, it has a single meaning when referring to the one true God. And so the plural title is a way of showing respect for the majesty or greatness of the one that the title is referring to. In this case, it's referring to God whose name is Yahweh. And so upon further study, when we look at the grammar and other uses of the word Elohim throughout the Old Testament, uh, we can understand that it's referring to a plural of majesty, honor, and excellency. It's often called the majestic plural or the royal plural. And even Trinitarian scholars have come to understand this. They've come to recognize that the title Elohim, though it's a plural noun, it's not referring to a trinity of multiple persons that make up God. Um, they recognize how this word Elohim is used throughout the Old Testament, and so they have learned that they shouldn't just turn to the Hebrew and see that it's a plural word and conclude that it means that uh, God is therefore multiple persons. So the Trinitarian scholars that have looked deeper at, at this meaning and understand the Hebrew a little better, they no longer turn to the Old Testament and use uh, the fact that it's a plural noun, Elohim. They never, no longer use that as a proof text to teach the Trinity doctrine. And so we're going to see, when we look at how the, the, that word Elohim is used throughout the Old Testament, we're going to see that it, it conveys that God is the greatest God of all. He's the God of gods. He's the Elohim of Elohim. And we're going to turn to a passage here shortly that, that calls uh, uh, Yahweh the God of gods, the Elohim of Elohim. And so the plural in Hebrew, it gives greater honor to God. That's why the plurality is, is used. In no way should it get us to think that God is made up of multiple persons. What it establishes is that God is God in the fullest sense of that, that word. He's the God of gods. He's the ultimate and supreme deity. And so it's pointing to the fullness of his divine strength and greatness. And so even when you click on that word in the Strong's, you can see that it, it, it can refer to a plurality of false gods, gods in the ordinary sense, but when referring to the one true God, the supreme God, it's that supreme deity. But we're going to learn it. It's also used in, in the Old Testament to refer to angels and also judges. And we're going to see how even a lord or master, um, an earthly lord or master, um, can be great and mighty and uh, in a position where uh, this uh, plural noun is used to describe one individual. And so right off the bat, I want to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 17. Because this shows a little bit about what I'm talking about. It says, For the Lord, that's Yahweh, for Yahweh your God is God of gods. Yahweh your Elohim. And every time we see H430, that's the word Elohim. And so... Every time God is mentioned here, and gods, 
Elohim is uh, written. So what this is saying is Yahweh, your Elohim, is Elohim of Elohim and Lord of Lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. So uh, Yahweh is Elohim of Elohim. And if this were referring to multiple persons, there may really be no difference among these other false gods, these other false deities. And so God is referring to one singular deity, and the New Testament reveals him to be the Father. Not three persons, but the Father alone. So whenever we read about Elohim, it's referring to the Father, and his name is Yahweh, the creator of, of heaven and earth. And so we're now going to turn to some examples in the Old Testament where Elohim is used. And when it's referring to the one true God, it's always accompanied by singular verbs. So if the one true God, the one true Elohim, is um, uh, doing something or saying something, the verbs associated with him are singular verbs, even though the title Elohim is a plural noun. However, when Elohim refers to more than one false God, it's always accompanied by plural verbs. And so we're going to turn to some of these examples that help us to see that when referring to the one true God, singular verbs are used. And when referring to um, more than one false god, um, plural verbs are used. And so understanding the grammar, it helps us to know that Elohim refers to the one true God alone. And so I'm going off the scholars and their uh, understanding of grammar, the structure in the Hebrew. Um, so I'm just going to point you to these verses that establish these truths with regards to um, plural verbs and singular verbs. And so just keep in mind that if the reason Elohim Whenever uh, some Trinitarians turn to the Old Testament and look at Elohim, if, if, if the reason Elohim is used is to imply that uh, the one true God consists of multiple persons that are only one in purpose and essence, then plural verbs would be required. So if that's their argument, a, like a plural verb here would be required if God was made up of three persons, if that was the reason Elohim in the Hebrew was used um, here for God. But what we find is that created, the verb here, it's a singular verb. So in the beginning, Elohim, which is plural, again, it's not describing a plurality of persons, but a plural of majesty, honor, and excellency, showing that God is the greatest God of all, his greatness and his might. So it's plural, and if it was referring to multiple persons, then created should have a plural a verb, but it doesn't. It has a singular verb. And so this um, establishes that the one who created the heaven and the earth is singular, not multiple persons that are somehow one, but singular. And we've learned he is the Father and his name is Yahweh. But what's really interesting is when we look at uh, some examples of false gods, Exodus chapter 32, verses 3 and 4 it says, And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So this word for gods here is Elohim. So every time we see 430, I'm not going to click on it every time, it's referring to Elohim. And uh, the, this word brought is a verb, and it happens to be a plural verb. So that would tell us that the false gods that this is referring to is more than one false god. And another example is in Deuteronomy chapter 4, in verse 28. It says, And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. So here, God's is Elohim, and these verbs see, hear, eat, and smell, they're all plural verbs, which establish that these gods are m more than one false god. And so that is the, the general understanding of how we determine whether there's more than one or not. And so if Trinitarians turn to the Old Testament and look at Elohim, and they argue that the reason Elohim is used to define the one true God is because God is made up of multiple persons, and that's the point that they are making, then you would see plural verbs um, used when God, uh, Elohim, um, the Creator, uh, does things.
And all throughout the Old Testament, you see God doing things with singular verbs attached to the plural noun Elohim. And so this is what has caused Trinitarian scholars that have looked deeper to reject this idea that Elohim teaches that God is made up of multiple persons. And so in Judges 10, 14, another example, it says, Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. So that word for gods is Elohim. And deliver here is a verb. It happens to be a plural verb. So this is implying that gods, the Elohim, is referring to more than one false god. Now what's interesting is we're going to look at examples where Elohim can be referring to um, one individual false god as well. And so this, this just goes to show the complexity of this word in the Hebrew and how we need to understand these things so that we don't just assume the plurality means more than one. But before I show you those examples, I want to show you a powerful um, revelation that, that can be had with uh, understanding how Elohim is used in the Old Testament. And it's here in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So here Yahweh said unto Moses, and we know Moses was one person. He was one individual person. And Yahweh said unto him, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. Now that word for God is Elohim. So Yahweh told Moses that, that uh, he had made him a Elohim to Pharaoh. Now God didn't make Moses a uh, three persons um, to Pharaoh or five persons or a multi multiplicity of persons. We know that that's ridiculous to even uh, come to that conclusion. Just because an, a, a plural a noun, a plural title is used here. So when we take all of this into consideration, we see the many ways in which Elohim is used throughout the Old Testament. We can come to recognize that it symbolizes having Elohim written here regarding Moses and how uh, Yahweh was going to make him an Elohim to Pharaoh. It's symbolizing that Moses was going to be very great in Pharaoh's eyes. And so in chapter 11, in verse 3, it even confirms this. It says, And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. So this is confirming that understanding that that word Elohim with, re with regards to Moses and how Yahweh was going to make Moses and Elohim in, in Pharaoh's eyes, it's all pointing to that greatness. It's all pointing to um, how he was going to be great in the eyes of Pharaoh. And one thing that we need to keep in mind uh, on this subject is when Elohim is used in the Old Testament to describe God and the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament and uh, lists, let's say, a passage of scripture where Elohim is mentioned, it's translated into Greek as theos. And that's, an, that's a singular noun. It's not a plural noun. The, the plural noun theoi is never used with, with regards to Elohim of the Old Testament. And so now I want to show you some greater complexity of how Elohim is used in the Old Testament, referring to individual false gods. It doesn't have to refer to uh, a, a multitude of false gods. It can refer to individual false gods. So in 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. And so God here is Elohim, and it's referring to one God. So the plural noun Elohim is, is used in reference to one God. And then in 1 Kings 11.33, we see it referring to singular uh, gods as well, false gods. It says, Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians. So Ashtaroth must have been a female um, deity that they looked, a false deity, and it's written as Elohim. Goddess is, is uh, from the Hebrew Elohim. And then it says, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and god 
is Elohim. Every instance that God is used here, Milcom, the God of the children of Ammon, referring, it's using the Hebrew Elohim. And so here, singular false gods are called Elohim. And then we, we can turn to Psalm chapter 8 and verse 5, where uh, Elohim is used to refer to angels. Regarding man, it says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. And then when we compare this with Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, it confirms that it's referring to the angels. So angels here is Elohim. And then when you turn to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, um, it's, it's referring to the angels and how Jesus was made lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death, so that he could atone for the sins of mankind. And then it can also refer to judges as in Exodus chapter 21 and verse 6. It says, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. Um, so here it's used as judges, and it is the word Elohim. So you can see that that Hebrew word has much complexity to it. And too many people turn to the Old Testament and, and create this mystery behind that word when referring to God when there's no mystery. In, in the Hebrew, you can understand the, the meaning behind it when you just look at how it's used throughout the Old Testament and you can understand the plural of majesty and, and honor and excellency and that greatness that it conveys. And so by using that plural uh, noun, um, that plural title, Elohim, it's elevating God and saying that he is the greatest of all gods. He is the God of gods. He is the Elohim of Elohim. And then the last example I want to turn to is in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 6. Just to show you uh, Hebrew words, just because they're plural, does, does not mean that we can create a multiplicity of whatever it's referring to. So this reads, But Abram said unto Sarai, which is Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And that's referring to Hagar. And when Sarai or Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. So uh, Hagar fled from the face of Sarah. So we know that this is um, referring to one face. We know Sarah didn't have ten faces, five faces. She had one face. But in the Hebrew, that word for face is panim. It's a plural, a plural noun, um, even though it was referring to only one face. And the reason in the Hebrew it's a plural noun is because in the Hebrew language, they would put plurality on something that had a, a much depth to it. So since the face has many dimensions to it, um, it's written in the plural. And so just by doing a very basic uh, a look into plural words and how they're used in the Hebrew and wh wh why they're plural to convey something other than what the in our English minds we think, oh, because a word is plural, it means that it has to be a plurality of whatever it's describing. This is not only referring to one face and it's a plural word in, in the Hebrew. And so that should really speak to us. We should allow um, all of God's word to speak for itself. And throughout the Old Testament, when we read about God, whose name is Yahweh, we see singular verbs used when he does things, when he says things. And that tells us that God is not made up of multiple persons, but there's only one God in the Old Testament, and that is the Father, and his name is Yahweh. And so this is very easy to understand. There's not a mystery in who God is. There's no, no mystery tied up in the word Elohim um, when referring to one God. So do not read uh, Trinitarian doctrine into this word God just because it's plural in the Hebrew. That would be extreme error, and it would uh, contradict uh, what the rest of God's word um, reveals to us about this one true God. And so I know that that was a lot to take in, but I hope that you can at least see the complexity behind this uh, word Elohim and how it's not referring to multiple persons of God. You can see that it's referring to his plural of majesty, honor, and excellency. And it's telling us that God is the greatest. He is the Elohim of Elohim. He is the Adonai or Adonim of Adonim. So he's the Lord of Lords. He's the God of gods. And we know that it's referring to 
the Father, and his name is Yahweh. So uh, in the next video, I want to go into uh, talking about uh, the term one. And in the Hebrew, when we read, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, there are many people that argue that this uh, Hebrew word one refers to um, one in purpose. So echad re refers to one in purpose, and they'll argue that all this is saying is that God is a trinity of persons. But we're going to learn that that's also an error, and we're going to look and see how that Hebrew word for one is used throughout the Old Testament to see that God is singular in number, and God is the Father, and his name is Yahweh. And so uh, please uh, keep a lookout for that upcoming video as we continue this series together. And God bless you in your continued studies.